In this section of the discussion on normal distribution, I introduce a special type of normal variable called z. z is referred to as a standard normal variable in that its mean, as I show here, is 0 and its standard deviation is 1. Actually, its variance is 1, and if variance is 1, then of course standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, would also be 1. Now, before we continue, remember that for any normal distribution, which is so described using the um, frequency polygon, it is bell-shaped and it is symmetric ab uh, about the mean. One side is a mirror image of the other and given that the total area under the curve is equal to 1, it means that the total area on the right side of this curve would be 0.5 and on the other side would also be 0.5. And so, if for example, we're interested in capturing the central area equal to a probability of uh, 0.5, uh, 0.95, it means that one half of it stretching out to this side would be 0.475 and this other side would also be 0.475. So this is simply to illustrate the point. Now though, it is important also to understand that if a variable is standard normal, it will be very easy for us to find probabilities for any values of z that z may have. Because in fact, if z is equal to 1, then this area right here that corresponds to a z value of 1, we can find that quite so easily by going to the front or the back of any standard statistics book where you see the z table. And this is the z table right here. So for a z value, this is z right here, and these are the values of z, and these are the decimal extensions of the values of z. The central area, the light purple, show the probabilities, but the z values are right here on the margin. So a z value of 1 would be, this is the z value of 1, and the corresponding probability, which is the same as the area under the curve corresponding to it, is point. 3413. So if I go back here, it means that this region right here, just this area, adjoined by 0 and 1, is 0.3413. In the same vein, for a z value of 2, this is a z value of 2. Now the area corresponding to it, which is the area from 0 to 2, meaning this shaded region right here the probability value which is that area we go here we look it up here would be 0 0.4772 now how about a z value of 2.5 if i go back here a z value of 2.5 2.5 is somewhere right here so meaning the area up to this point up to this point if we were to extend this shading right here catch it up to this point the area that corresponds to that z value of 2.5 if I go forward here this is 2.5 that's it right here 0.4938 well how about 2.55 well again this is 2.5 so you gotta work it up toward the right until you catch it up to where it connects to 0.05 which will give it 2.05 so these are two decimal extensions right uh, up here so 2.55 would be, if you come down here, would give us an area or probability value of 0.4946. So that's how, that's how to read this table. And you can easily find probability values for any value of z that's given. So let's look at a couple of examples right here. The first is, what's the probability value corresponding to z values of negative 2 and 1? Before we answer this question, I would want to remind you of some important implication of the symmetry of this curve. If you find a z value, if you find the area corresponding to a z value of 1, it will be exactly the same area that would correspond to a z value of negative 1 because the distance from here from the mean of 0 to 1 is precisely the same as the distance from 0 to negative 1.
And so if someone were to ask you what's the area corresponding to the Z, to a Z value of negative 1, you simply go to the table and look it up under a Z value of 1, which would be 0.3413. In the same vein, a z value of negative 2. The area corresponding to it is precisely the same as what you would get for a z value of 2. Again, this is symmetric. One side is a mirror image of the other. So any probability value that you find for a positive z value is exactly the same as you would find if that z value had a, had a negative sign in front of it. With that understanding, let's proceed and look at example number one, which wants to find the area between the values of negative 2 and 1. So I've kind of sketched it out here. When drawing your normal curve and labeling it, please do not bother putting in all these numbers. The reason you see them is because I did this on a computer and then posted it here for increased visual appeal. <laughs> all right. So, but all you need to do is to simply sketch this out, put a line in the middle, write zero right here to correspond to the value of the mean. As you know, Z has a, a mean value of zero and then put a negative two here to correspond with the lower limit right here and some value one here. You don't have to draw it to, or write it to scale. All right, just so you can shade a region, eyeball it and know what's up. Now then, so here's what, what we're going to do. This table that you see here again gives you the area for just one side of the curve, which is the right side for the for z values that are positive. So going forward once again, let's find the area corresponding to a z value of 1. That area, we already looked at it before, is 0.3413. So this is this area right here. And then we're also going to separately look up the area corresponding to a z value of 2. From here to here again is 2. You don't have to again be bothered by the fact that we're looking at negative 2. All we simply want is the area. And that area, we looked at it before, is 0.4772. And to confirm, go back here. Z value of 2. Look at the area, 0.4772. So right here, if you add these two together, that's your answer. Right down here, 0.8185. And therefore, the answer to the question, what is the probability that a standard normal random variable will lie between the values of minus 2 and 1 is 0.8185 approximately. All right? And in layman's language, you can say that there is about 81.85% chance that the value of z would lie between minus 2 and 1. Now, though, there is an even easier way of finding probabilities corresponding to Z values on the web. One of my preferred websites is this one that you see here, which is Hyperstat. So if we go there, we'll see a dialog box that looks like this, and we'll simply enter in the values, and it'll automatically calculate the result for us. So let's go there. I bring it up. That's it right here. So here, again, we're looking for the value corresponding to, we're looking for the probability value corresponding to z of minus 2 and 1. Now, by default, the mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1. The computer already has that given. And so we want, we want to choose this between two numbers, all right? Between the lower number, you fill it in, minus 2. And the upper number, clear this out and put 1. All right, and then click Recalculate. And that's it right there. And you can see how it shades it nicely for you from negative 2 to 1. That's your result, 0.8186. Continuing, for example, number 2 says, what's the probability that the value of z would be greater than 1.5? Well, again. You draw it out, and the central area, well, the central value is 0. So 1.5 is going to be a value on the right side of the mean, 
which is right here. See, that's my z of 1.5 again. Don't be bothered writing out all these uh, scale the scale numbers. Just put your zero and identify a point of 1.5 right here, and then shade the corresponding region of interest. This is the region of interest, the blue region, because we want greater than the area that's greater than 1.5, right? Corresponding to this point. So now though, incidentally, on the Z table, when we go back here and look up 1.5, that area is 0.4332. 0.4332 if I advance to the problem that 0.4332 is actually here because again the table gives you the area corresponding to a Z value of 1.5 standard deviations above the mean it only gives you areas that follows the mean it does not give you the area outside that's unconnected with a central point with the mean so any area that you look up on this table going back again that you look up right here these are all areas from the mean of zero going forward or going backwards keep that in mind meaning therefore that when you look up 1.5 the area of 0.4332 is the area from zero going forward all the way up to 1.5 Meaning, therefore, that for us to find this little area, we need to subtract 0.4332 from 0.5. Surprised? Hope not. Because, again, one half of the area is 0.5. The other half is 0.5. So, by subtracting 0.4332 from 0.5, that leaves us with this residual right here, which comes out to be... 0.0668 and for good measure we can use this website to confirm that so we want the area that one point that's that corresponds to a z value of 1.5 above it so let's check this above here and right here type in 1.5 see with this dialog box we need not play with the table argument of looking up z values that begin from where the probabilities begin from z of zero here the computer knows what's up so once we check above 1.5 it looks up the area above 1.5 because this point right here is 1.5 so that's our area and right down here that's our answer 0 0.0668 simple as that So now let's look at example number three. It says, what's the probability that the value of z would lie between one and two? Well, this is a tricky one. Between one and two. Well, first off, remember again, the mean is zero. And we're looking for the area corresponding to z values of one and two, between one and two, which is this shaded region. Now, incidentally, we cannot directly find it on the table. We can look at the table and find the area corresponding to a Z of 1, which is going to give us this region right here, unshaded region right here, and that area is 0.3413. Likewise, we can also go to the table and look up the probability corresponding to a Z value of 2, and that's 0.4772. But as you can see, this area right here is all is from zero all the way to two. So well, let's find the correct answer by deduction. If we know that the total area from here to here is 0.4772, and the area from from here to this point is 0.3413, why don't we subtract 0.3413 from 0.4772 and the residual would be this blue guy right here which is 0.1359 so it's much easier if you use um, this website and this is again one of several websites I'm I'm not saying that this is the only portal that you can go and get your results 
So again, we want the area corresponding to, let's go here, corresponding to Z values of 1 and 2. So I'm going to use the between right here. And it's going to be between 1 and 2. And I recalculate and that's it. That's the area between 1 and 2, even though the mean is 0 right here, as confirmed here. And that's the area, 0 0.1359. Which is what you see here. All right, so this concludes this brief explanation of the standard normal variable z. I'm Pat Obi, Professor of Finance and Quantitative Methods, Purdue University, Calumet.